דניאלה מיכאלי, רויטל מוניטיין, זאב שצקי, Welcome to Culture Buzz. Uh, although the Titanic just uh, sunk, we are happy to be sitting now with the survivors. And I would like to open up by asking you, what in your opinion uh, makes the Titanic tragedy still relevant today, uh, globally and especially for Israel? You are all looking at me as if I am the one who have to speak. Anyway, before you told me that we are going to be interviewed for your new site, but the only thing you didn't tell me is that it will be in English. So that is quite a surprise for me. <laughs> anyway, we'll try to cope with it. Uh, Vital's English is perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I think it, it was a major event because, because uh, as I imagine, as, as I've heard, you know, such a big ship never before has, you know, um, have, we, have we known, to, uh, you know, uh, such, it, it seemed perfect, you know, it can't sink, it can, nothing could happen to it, it's perfect. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, it's from, I just have the idiom in, in Hebrew. However you say. You know, the, the fact that, that it just went down and... From the top of the hill to the, down the hill. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it had to, to become a symbol, you know, for society, for our dreams and hope going down the drain for for our um, ambitions for our vanity for our, and um, and people keep and we keep asking ourselves why did it happen did it have to be that happened? where are we responsible what were we blind to and it's relevant because because it is a vain belief people today also believe in technology and believe in in, in making a lot of fortune and the Titanic story, the Titanic fable proves that uh, as much as you have the money and as much as you have the high technology, the Titanic was the uh, front of uh, technological progress of that time and nevertheless uh, it goes down. I always think about the, the, um, the people story, the person in the story. And it's interesting that um, it has no uh, relevance to what function you're, you're to what role you're playing. Um, just a few days ago, there was a ship that sank, and the captain didn't take any responsibility. He fled, and it's, it's always what's left, you know, how people uh, interact right. and act. Uh, being part of the audience, it. Uh, it was quite uh, striking how demanding the play is when it comes to the wonderful uh, crew that you have assembled. The, these are not only young and talented actors, they are also singers and even dancers. How difficult this has been for you and for them? Uh, I think it's, it, it's, well, it's the kind of theater that I believe in. It's not a musical. You don't uh, necessarily follow steps. You don't have to lift your leg up. I don't know if they would have been accepted to a Broadway show. But you have to be very sensitive with all, with all your senses and your physical, of course, ability and your musicality. And all this has to really open up. And then you have to <coughs> actually react and go into... Um, what do you mean? Um, Sorry? No, no. Uh, um, you know, uh, sorry, don't have the word. Um, situation. Yeah, to, to react to situations and, and, and use your senses. So, what is it when I'm when water is all around me? What is it when I hear the cries of the people? What is it when I'm really freezing in the water? What is it to almost be dead in a way? And then also go into you know, that time, because they live now in the, you know, 21st century, and um, what do I know about people who then, you know, looked at this big, fantastic ship, never went on 
never seen anything like that, never tasted that kind of food, and they're there. And what does it do to your posture, to your... So he really went through those things, and the idea was, of course, you have to be talented, as you say, but you have to open up to, to um, and react to, to whatever is given to you. We were very careful, sorry, we were very careful that it will not look as an entertainment group. Uh, we were very cautioned that uh, it will be dramatic and not uh, song and dance. And That's exactly what I was going to say. It's not numbers. You know, the songs are very um, attractive, but they're not numbers. Um, they, 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 are a they tell us a story. And, um, and the actors have to be in a situation while singing something happy, they're drowning, while, um, I don't know, um, all the elegance, you know what's going to happen. Um, the play at the beginning, I, I think the play that we, that we um, composed uh, 20 years ago had um, um, a soundtrack of 15 minutes. It started with a ragtime that doesn't show uh, in this version. And what I was trying to do is, is uh, replicate the sounds from that era, but make it feel more modern, more like a commercial over here. That everybody sells you that everything is fine and great, but actually we know that it's, that it's only... It's, I think it was it quite hard like it. for the actors to grasp this, this sort of ironic mm -hmm. uh, you know, element that really... Uh, uh, they have used a lot in the text. How is it that I, I'm, for instance, in the in the part of the of the orchestra? What is it? I'm I'm there. I'm singing, but I'm, I'm dead. Am I? But I'm dead. Yeah. But I'm in the situation. So where where am I as an actor? Whom whom am I playing? What's the situation? And so and being there, it took time to, to really understand um, how do I carry this out? Because I'm not necessarily ironic, but the the. the the uh, situation. Situation, situation and what comes out of it. Uh, and should we, kept, be there. we kept out of the field of cage, of pastiche, of no love story, no Leonardo DiCaprio in our production. So it wasn't easy. It's easier that when you have a love story, a line of a love story or something like that, more romantic. We have a tendency sometimes to label any production. For example, this would probably be called by some fringe. Do you believe that uh, such a play uh, can make it into the mainstream Israeli theater? I must uh, tell you that there is a saying that one of my friends used to say that Israel is so small that everything is in the mainstream. There is no fringe. So the, maybe that's an answer. Maybe I should rephrase my question. <laughs> Did any of the national theaters have shown interest in this uh, play? And if not, do you expect them to do so? I would, I would definitely expect them, but I think they're very much into what they do and what they work. You know, they, they don't usually host out something independent, independent theater. Uh, well, the sad story is that I think they do other productions, and, and this is more, it is fringe, you're right, it is fringe. I, I expect that maybe it, it, it could appeal very much um, to the world around us, because uh, maybe, you know, there are more possibilities, there is fringe in the center, and, uh, and main sort of, and also, um, I think it's, it has an international appeal. Uh, unfortunately, it would take time for, for, for people in Israel to know more and more about it. Maybe people who go to dance, who go to concerts, would show more interest. But of course, they have to know about it. So. Israeli National Theater is a Titanic by itself. <laughs> wow. 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 That's, uh, and this happy note. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> Well, uh, Culture Buzz uh, does appreciate your uh, being uh, candid. Uh, in your permission, ladies and gentlemen, I will conclude by asking, since you have participated with this uh, fantastic play, in my opinion, in the exposure, the last uh, theater exposure, uh, can you tell us if uh, some of the visitors coming from all over the world have shown interest in importing your play 
abroad. They have definitely shown interest, but unfortunately we don't have anything concrete right now yet. Uh, especially uh, from China, from Uruguay, from Greece, from Cyprus. Cyprus. They were very clear about it. And now we expect to go on. Uh, we are, we are sure that the foreign ministry will help us and so we will go abroad. It's a large ensemble to export. But tricky. <laughs> no uh, cargo. So, with this optimistic note, we conclude this interview. I want to thank the three of you for uh, giving us this uh, opportunity and wish you good luck in your future endeavors and uh, may the ship uh, <laughs> sail forever. Thank you. Thank you very much.